just exit the maintenance phase so hopefully everything is okay on your side i already restore all the content of our subject from uh basically from the server that they already already taken down okay now let us look at human capital management hcm case one okay now just a quick <coughs> Just a quick read through. Okay, now the employees is involved is basically two. First is recruiting officer Marco Romero and also personal administration officer San Chang. Okay, now the process you start the process with the creation of three positions of for the head of department, a security manager and a security guard. Basically, okay, you Case study starts with the creation of a new department where there is going to be three new positions. Now, some positions can be multiple persons, some position can only be one. After you define the qualification profile, that is what are the qualifications that is needed for the staff to be hired or basically the, the people who apply for the job to be hired or the individual positions that were made available that you have created. Subsequently, the position of the head of department is staffed by means of personnel action. Okay, this is basically being used in, uh, in terms of staffing internally, not by job advertisement. Afterwards, you maintain the bank detail, basic pay. The position of the security guard, however, is for public, which means that it's going to be advertised so people can start applying for a job. That is for security guard. An employee is eventually hired after the job is being posted, the interview is being conducted, you already choose which uh, applicant will be getting the job, and then you're going to be defining uh, a quick promotion to security manager because currently uh, we need to do something in terms of if let's say the staff is already being hired, we need to plan what is the future career that the staff can become. So basically, uh, looking into the promotion of becoming a security manager. In order to qualify a security guard for the position of security manager, book for them advanced training. That's how in the industrial world, or basically in any world where you are working, one way for you to get a promotion is by um, equip, uh, equipping yourself with different knowledges, different training, different certificates so that you have the extra edge of uh, extra edge over the other people who are currently looking into getting the position of security manager. Before the ultimate promotion of the employee, undertake a full assessment. That is how it's done. And finally, review the organizational plan. Okay. Now, if you look at here, earlier uh, earlier processes in the human capital management. This is where we basically create positions okay first we you're going to be creating positions those three positions uh head of security security manager and security guard okay you're going to be creating the career and then defining requirements okay defining requirements is going to be uh, basically defining what are some of the needs or basically the qualification that is needed for this uh, for that position okay and then you're going to be recruiting employee putting one employee as the security as the head of security and then you're going to display back how does your organization structure is going to look like and who is uh, holding on those position okay now for the security guard, security guard is supposed to be open to the public. So post job advertisement. Now, how does this being executed is basically uh, you're going to basically end up with a document at the end, a document, a job advertisement so that it can be post in the World Wide Web. Now, just to be clear, after the job is being post, applicant data is being entered by the staff inside GBI. This is not being entered by the applicant themselves. If I'm not, uh, I'm not sure whether this was mentioned or not during the earlier stages of our class, SAP is for internal use only. If the SAP is being 
installed for the company Global Buy Incorporated, GBI, which means that only GBI staff can use that system. Similar to our class, you are a student of UMP. Only you, those who register for this subject, can enter to the system. How? By the, the assignment of different user ID and the passing of passwords that was being done during the early of the semester. So basically, this part here, you try to imagine that the public is going to be there is no integration whatsoever happening here. The public is going to go through, let's say, a website. They're going to register their information, uh, choose a job. Let's say, for example, if you were familiar with the website My Future Job, that is uh, one of the initiatives that was conducted by our government. Now, what happens here in our case study, that is HCM1, is basically, let's say, for example, the system, the online system is there. Applicants are applying through there and then the human resource department will go through the system that the applicant use and transfer that data into their SAP in Global by Incorporated in GBI. That is where this part here happened. Enter applicants master data. There is, uh, in this case, there is no integration in terms of the system that the applicant use and the system that is GBI using. So after the master data for the applicant has already been entered, so you prepare applicant for hiring. So this is where uh, the interview start, the choosing of which of the candidate will be hired for the position of security guard is being done. After the filtering has been done, so hire the applicant. Hire the applicant, insert who is proof of hiring is through whom, Maintain qualification profile. This is to insert the qualification that the new staff already has. Maybe they already have, uh, okay, currently for security guard. Let's say, for example, they have certification on performing uh, CPR, for example. They have um, certification on handling, on weapons handling, let's say, for example. So those are the different qualifications that the human resource staff would insert inside the system, maintain qualification profile. So immediately, according to the case study, that staff should be planned for future career of becoming a security manager is being stated here. So what the next part of this process is basically, it's not really needed, but, um, it's just an example. So basically, after being hired, plan for security manager promotion for that new staff. So what to do here is basically see what are the different career path or different trainings that need that can be attended by the security guard so that they can be promoted into security manager. So create an event of um, any training uh, that is needed, book the event, uh, book the training, uh, follow up and then execute the career plan. Prepare appraisal uh, when everything is ready, the training has already been done. So prepare for appraisal in terms of being assessed whether they are ready or not to become the security manager, manager from the position of security guard. And then finally, transfer from security guard to security manager. So that is what is happening here. But basically, in terms of in term of hiring, human capital management, the only part that is most important, usually in terms of the real world, is until here. Maintain qualification profile. The parts where preparing for the staff for promotion is something that usually done after the staff is already working for the company for the past few years, let's say five years, eight years, and then they can plan for the staff to be promoted to the next higher position. So that is how HCM1 is being done. Now, we're moving on to HCM2 in terms of payroll. This is where you're going to simulate, uh, I'm going to mention this uh, again, this is just a simulation. This is where human resource staff will try to simulate payroll execution. Okay, let us go through 
the case study before starting the payroll process. Okay, now notice here, before starting, we are not actually executing the payroll process. This is one process that is, I'm not sure whether is it hectic or not because currently there is function for simulation because I never ever been positioned as a human resource staff. I'm just a lecturer. So I'm guessing payroll is going to be one hectic process. So before a payroll can be executed, there is a function for human resource staff to execute a simulation of payroll process. Now, before starting the payroll process, a new position of marketing manager has been created. After this, a new position will be hired. Okay, it's being hired again, not something. Um, just imagine uh, from this process until here, this statement here, a new position is basically you are doing the same process as HCM1, but until only hiring. Okay. The following info types will be created for payroll. Working hours, base salary, bank detail, capital information, taxes and social insurance, worker compensation association. Those are some of the information that is needed for generating payroll because currently payroll, you need to pay people depending on how they work with the company. Okay. Now, in terms of the different way of people working, is not in terms of working from home and working from the office. No, there are some of them are contracts, which means that in terms of their payroll, their benefits is going to be different. Some of the stuff is shift, shift work hour, which means that their payroll is going to be different. Maybe they can uh, claim for, um, why, why is it being called? It's being, oh, it's being called OT. I, do, I don't remember the terms. Can someone quick search and reply in the chat? What is, okay, sorry. Is uh, they can apply for overtime. Okay. So they can apply for overtime. That is in terms of staff who are in a shift based working hours. Those are who are working flex hours. So that is going to be different. It's going to be accumulating for the week kind of payroll. And then there is staff who are the most simplest way of calculation that is working from eight to five. Uh, those are some of the things that, for example, need to be considered when running payroll because you have different staff, different benefits, different working hour, different um, deduction of their salary, different commitments. So there is a lot of uh, calculation that's ne needed to be done here inside payroll. So what happens here is basically you're going to create a position, create a bank for payment to be entered, hire the staff, and then try to execute a payroll simulation. Whether is it okay or not, are they getting the correct number of pay for their positions? For now, it's basically for marketing manager. Okay, um, so basically that is the revision for the case study of HCM1 and HCM2. Um, so 